Edna? Why hasn't Mr Branson been asked to go with the others? I'm sure I don't know. I wonder what Lady Flincher made of her cousin's daughter eloping with a chauffeur. It's not your place to wonder. What was she like? She was a sweet, kind person. And a real beauty, inside and out. You think she could have done better? But she didn't think she could do better, and that's what matters. He's not nice looking. I'll give him that. I don't think you're required to give him anything. Oh, Mr Carson sent me up to clear. He thought you'd be out of here. I should be. It seems sad for you to be left behind all on your own. I'm used to it. Yes. Yes, of course, you would be. It must be very hard. Don't worry about me. Plenty to do. You're the new maid, aren't you? What's your name? Edna. Edna Braithwaite. Tom, can I take this chance to say you've managed a very delicate transition, superbly? Thank you. But don't be too eager to please. You have a new identity. And I don't mean because you're not a chauffeur anymore. You are the agent of this estate, and as the agent, you have a perfect right to talk to anyone who works under you. Anyone you choose. That's quite a speech. I mean it. You have a position now. And you're entitled to use it. Mr Branson. I didn't want to drag one of you upstairs to open the door. That was kind. Oh, I wondered if you would allow the maids to clean during the day while the family is in Scotland. You don't need my permission. But I do. And if you want to use a particular room, then please let me know and we'll vacate it at once. Thank you, Mrs Hughes. Good night. Good night, Mr Branson. From George. This is very daring. Sitting in a pub on your own. And the village cut you off dead forever. I knew you were coming in. And I don't care about all that stuff. Do you have the day off? I'll fudge it, but not really. We've extra cleaning to do while the family's away. Of course, your family. Well, I am and I'm not, as I'm sure you know. Anna said, when you first came back as Lady Sybil's husband, you refused to dress the part, but you do now. I was tired of talking about my clothes every time I came down the stairs. I'm still the same man inside. Then why not join us for dinner one night, instead of eating alone? How can I help, Mr Branson? I was thinking... It's just... Yes? I thought I'd come down for supper tonight. Catch up with your news. If you'd like to, of course you'd be very welcome. We don't eat late while the family's away, so dinner will be at about eight o'clock. I'll see you then. Fain's I tell Mr Carson. 
you're going to wear. Nothing good, that's for sure. Mm. I'll keep an eye on the place. Oh, don't say you're not coming. I, I thought you could drive us. There is no need for impertinence, Edna, thank you. You're all right. I'm happy to drive them. What time are we leaving? About half past four. But Mr Stark can easily drive us. Because I'm so high and mighty. You're part of the family now. There's nothing false in that. I know. I hope you do. Because if someone is trying to make you feel awkward, they're in the wrong, not you. I'll be there at half past four. You'd like to know Mr. Barrow is feeling much better. Thank you, but you should go now. Just wanted to tell you what a lovely day I've had. Really lovely. Do you want to meet for lunch tomorrow in the Grantham Arms? That was Mr. Bates on the telephone. Lady Mary and Anna are coming back today. They're already on the train. Well, we'd better look sharp. Edna, air the room and make up the bed while I go and talk to Mrs. Patmore. Must I? Why? Do you have other plans, Edna? I said I'd meet Tom Branson for lunch in the village. Did you indeed? Tom Branson? Before you start, it may not be his fault. Whether it's his fault or not, she has to go. Oh, yes. Of course, she has to go. So I spoil things for her? I'm afraid the work would no longer satisfy her. I've seen it before. She'd unsettled the other maids. I didn't encourage her, you know. Maybe. But if I may say it, you didn't discourage her either. Can I ask one thing? That you give her a decent reference. Please. I will. Though I don't think she's cut out to be a housemaid. Would you allow me to speak as I would have in the old days? Go on, then. You let Edna make you ashamed of your new life. But you've done well. And Lady Sybil would be so proud. <laughs> I can't bear to be without her. You must bear it. <laughs> and one day I hope, and so would she, you'll find someone to bear it with you. <laughs> but until then, be your own master and call your own tune. <laughs> now, do you have everything? What have I done wrong? I'm as good as Mr Branson. And there was nothing improper. Nothing at all. I'm sure. But there are rules to this way of life, Edna. And if you're not prepared to live by them, then it's not the right life for you. <laughs> <laughs> 